is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so it's been a while since we've kind of come in and kissed uh, the the whole area of Facebook again, and certainly it's, and I'm not talking about politically, I'm just talking about the usage of it, because we know that it, by definition, it's ever-changing, it always changes, and that there's some tips and tricks that we as authors, publishers, And speakers need to know in how to use Facebook to the ultimate element, I think I would call it. So it really maximizes. Um, And my guest today is Karen Albert. You can find her at BehindYourCurtain.com. But what we're really looking at is how to become really uh, and, 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 and the expert side, but also so you can shine above so much noise. And there's a lot of noise out there. Karen teaches it. She knows about it. She's an expert in social media. And, and I'm thrilled to have her. This is the first time we've had her as one of our publishing pros on Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. So with that, let's just jump into it. Karen, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. So, so glad to be here. Appreciate it. So, what? I, I guess I always like to ask people, what brought you to social media uh, as becoming this is where you're going to shine your star or let the curtain rise? Right. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, well, you know, in my past life, I worked in the corporate world um, for uh, a um, software company for about almost 20 years and uh, background being sales and marketing. And so, you know, just um, recognizing when Facebook came on the scene that it was such a game changer in terms of how we were looking at marketing in the old traditional way, right, where you put your content or your copy together and you had to distribute it to whatever that that publication was or that distribution, if it was a newspaper or radio or magazine or uh, whatever it was, and you were completely dependent upon them getting your message out in front of their market on their schedule, and you had to pay them. So when Facebook came on the scene, it was, I was absolutely fascinated with it because I was like, okay, so let me get this straight. I can put my message in front of whoever I want, whenever I want, and it's free. So the uh, software company that I was working for was um, looking for someone to kind of become the early adopter of using this. And uh, we're actually noted in Facebook as, as one of the early adopters of utilizing it for private groups where we had the different vertical users, clients with the software using it and, and um, helping communicate with the best use and tips and tricks and such. So that was <clears throat> how I sort of became introduced to it and started actually getting some experience with it. And then in 2010... Um, I decided to just make a significant shift and leave the corporate world. And I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to do something different that had a greater impact and, um, you know, a little bit more purpose driven. And I had a neighbor who has a nonprofit organization. So she comes up to me and she says, well, you're not doing anything, and I've got a fundraiser, and you know that Facebook thing, and I need help selling tickets. <laughs> so I didn't really get the opportunity to say no. So I thought, all right, I'll I'll, I'll uh, help her out. I do know the Facebook thing. So fast forward 90 days, had a great event, total success, tripled the amount of tickets sold, and the real estate agents that had donated the space for that event came up to me and said, so how much would you charge to do our social media? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was opportunity knocking right uh, right there, right? So I said, I'm yeah. going to get right back to you on that. So 
That was about 2011, really, Judy was when I when actually then formed form Behind Your Curtain as an official business. And <laughs> so that's kind of where it launched. I mean, you know, I, I just feel very blessed and honored today to have had the opportunity to um, continue to expand my knowledge and expertise of social media, because as you said, it is ever-changing, and uh, recognizing how business owners and entrepreneurs and, and authors can really effectively use it to see some tangible results, um, which I know a lot of people really struggle with that aspect of it, because there is a lot of noise, like you said, so how to cut through the noise and really see an impact. Oh, it's very noisy. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> yes. It, it is very noisy out there. And, and, of course, one of the noisiest ones has been Facebook. Um, yep, it's right uh, up there. You know, well, they'll, they're all, they all have their different noise level. Is, what are the, do you know what the latest stats are of who's, you know, who's following, uh, who's signed up, and how many people really monthly follow all these different platforms? Oh, in terms of the numbers of, of yeah. users? Yeah. Um, well, Facebook is definitely still leading. I mean, it's in the billions um, for sure. And then mm-hmm. you've got uh, Twitter and Instagram are kind of right along in parallel with that. I mean, Facebook owns Instagram now, so it's sort of a blended number, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have LinkedIn underneath that, which is getting pretty close to the billion. They're still in the uh, over half a million for sure in the number of users. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I mean, the, the, the way that you really want to look at it is more from a um, – all of these social media channels that I just referenced are just marketing tools. And so if you can really understand how to wrap a strategy around the use of the tool – um, that's really the way that any business owner uh, should look at and approach their use of social media because otherwise it's just sort of, well, let's just throw it up there and see what sticks, and that just becomes very exhausting, and so then people tend to sort of, you know, do nothing, right, becomes complete mm-hmm. avoidance. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, what I really like to do is help them understand, first of all, uh, let's take a step back and let's look at who is your market and who are you trying to put your your product or your service or your book in front of. And that should really be what the, the, the first step is before anybody really tries to utilize any of these tools. Because once you understand who it is that you're trying to speak to, then you can look at, okay, which of these social media tools is going to help me reach that particular market? Because not every market is on every tool, quite honestly. Um, and so... Uh, you know, that's sort of also part of my responsibility in addition to helping them understand who their market is, is also understanding then which tool is going to give them the most leverage, which social media tool is going to give them the most leverage to get their message in front of that particular market. And then really understanding the, the, what are the sort of the top five things that you can do on a daily basis in that particular social media channel so that you you know how to effectively use your time uh-huh. and you're not spending all day, you know, because it can be a bit of a shiny object syndrome <laughs> as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> a know. bling thing, for sure. It's a bling thing um, yeah. that, that can come up with it. Well, let, let's let's start with this. Um, how does an author identify which is the right tool to use? Yeah, great question. Um, And so that really goes back to understanding who their reader is. So if they have a good understanding of, uh, which I I know they will in terms of, you know, the the storyline and the genre of it, then it's really looking at, okay, who do you, who do you believe is your target market for this particular Uh book? Uh And so if we're looking at um, uh, sort of the, consumer population being, um, let's just say hypothetically that it is a book where the consumer population is going to be maybe female, uh, parents, or family, uh, something that's more lifestyle type, Um, Uh that's 
that's absolutely, you want to be all over Facebook and Instagram on those. Okay. If you are, if it's more of a um, personal development, uh, education, economics, uh, sports, <laughs> um, that's Twitter. That your community is all over that particular tool. Now, I'm not saying that you wouldn't want to use the other tools uh, in addition because there's always kind of two primary objectives that you're wanting to consider when you are using social media. One objective is getting your, your book in front of the particular market, right? But the other is also satisfying the, the, um, the, uh, what I call feeding the, the search engine algorithm. So you, you want to put it in front of those that, that, have an interest, but then you also want to make sure that you're using the other social media channels simply so that you will show up in search engine results because here, here's what happens. Google goes and they send these bots or spiders out on a mm -hmm. daily basis to scan the billions of websites that are out there, right? So because its responsibility is to make sure that it displays the correct content based on the words that people are using when they're searching for something. Mm -hmm. And so it can produce the results based on the information that you have on your sites that you may have well positioned with all of the right keywords and, and content and such for the um, sale or promotion of the book. But they, the, those bots also go and scan the top social media channels as well. And so that's, that's, a, and that's what I mean by the, there's the community that you know about or knows about you that you want to get your product in front of, but then you also don't want to discount the use of the other social media channels because it could help you in showing up in search engine results as well. And so um, strategically, you would put the majority of your efforts into the tool where your market resides, but then also use the other tools simply to continue to have your message, your brand, your content, the keywords being pushed out in those tools so that the, the Google search engine is also acknowledging you. Okay, so let's let's kiss on that a little bit when we come back after this first break. With us, okay, Karen Albert, and we are talking social media today. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good? If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed Jazz, punch, and panache. Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, 
business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me today is Karen Albert, and Karen is a social media expert, speaker. She owns, her, her company is Behind Your Curtain. Com. She's got over 20 years of experience with just marketing and consulting. So what, what we're really talking about is how to create facelifts uh, for your uh, program and so you get recognized. And she really started kissing on the, the spiders of Google, the really how important it is for you to uh, move into page one on Google since very few people ever look past page one. Um, and, and most don't recognize that. So I'd love to have, Karen, I'd love to have you get into um, just how people go about searching on Google, what kind of keywords sure. that we should be using to make sure that we are searchable, findable, and then let's say placeable <laughs> and move us into yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, and so, you know, can you hear me? Yes, you're fine. Okay, okay, great. So, as I was saying before, is that in addition to, um, you know, wanting to put your product uh, in front of the right particular market, that you want to make sure that you're also showing up when Google is, is uh, you know, the spiders are, are scanning. Mm-hmm. But the, the, the importance of um, your efforts for for both of those particular objectives, right, is really understanding what are the words that that particular, your market is using that is relevant to your product or your service or your book. And so we sort of live in this world of assumption all day long because we're so close to our product, right? We're so close to our story or our book as as the author or the the, uh, the professional that delivers the product or service. And so the challenge that I find the majority of the time when I'm hired by um, a business owner or or an author to help market the book out on social media is that they have done a wonderful job of compiling a list of keywords, but they're keywords that they think people are using when they are searching for for the the content of of their story or their book or their information. And so one of the exercises that we do is we'll actually do a keyword research online to find Mm -hmm. out what is the number of people that are searching on a monthly basis for particular Mm -hmm. words. And it's way more powerful if you can take a list of words that people are actually using and you know, (laughs) right, the number of people that are searching on a monthly basis in the U.S. or wherever you are geographically, that you know that that's the list of keywords that you, that is actually going to help you to get in front of the product, get in front of the market, and to feed the algorithm for Google. Um, and there's a great tool out there that I use that is free, and it's actually a browser plugin that works with Chrome and Firefox, and it's called Keywords Everywhere. And so you could just go to that website and you can download and you can plug it in, uh, add it as a plug into your browser. And what that does is that actually allows you to see the number of people that are searching on a monthly basis. Right now, you can only uh, contain it to the geography containment of the United States. Um, but it's still a really great way to start to put in the words, if you just then, after the plugin is in, you go to google.com and you start typing in the words that you think are going to be relevant to your storyline or your product or your service, 
and it'll start to tell you the number of people. The nice thing about it, in addition to seeing the number of people that are searching on a monthly basis, is that uh, it will also then pull up a list of other words that are related to what you typed in and tell you the number of people on a monthly basis that are searching for that. And a lot of times, those other ancillary lists are really helpful because, again, we are assuming, right, that we know that what the words are. Um, and the, the other lists uh, sometimes provide you words that you didn't even think that people would be using, but, the, it, but it's still related to your storyline or your product or service. Um, and then uh, uh, another great way of doing that is also to uh, find um, – uh, YouTube channels as well that have a high search volume uh, of how to. So those are other things that you want to think of also. If you're going to be marketing your book, it's also a great um, tactic to consider using YouTube for videos that are going to show up on the first page of maybe people are searching for, you know, how to, and then you fill in based on the keywords that are relevant to what your book is about. And mm -hmm. you do a quick video, put that on your YouTube channel. Because again, it's all about showing up on the first page. And if you can have a YouTube channel, which is owned by Google, that shows up on the first page, it's just another tool that can drive traffic to your site that could potentially help increase convert the sales of your book. So let me understand this, Karen. The keywords everywhere.com, because I wasn't familiar with side. I use Keyword Spy and others, but I'm always mm -hmm. interested in this. So you actually mm -hmm. go to it and download an app to your computer. Is that correct? Yeah, it's an it's a uh, it's an app or they call it a plug-in because it's for the browser. So oh. it, it installs either into Chrome or Firefox. Okay. And then you'll see it right up in the browser header view okay. right across the top as a little icon to the right. Mm -hmm. And when you click on that, you'll have to go through a validation process. And then you set the geographical area. And then it'll it, you basically will get the um, search volume, cost per click, competition data, all that other stuff. I don't do uh, CPC or competition I'm basically just looking mostly for the search volume, those numbers, mm -hmm. um, because those, that's really what you're wanting to look at is sort of capture those particular keywords that you know that the majority of the population in your market are using that's using, related to your service. Uh, and tell listeners what CBC stands for. Uh, cost per click. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's for marketing and advertising. If you're going out, uh, you might be interested in uh, if you're using Amazon marketing services. I guess that would tie in there. Maybe I'm not sure. Or uh, is this general advertising. Yeah, it's, it's more for Google. Okay. Google it's paid ads. That's the data that it's giving you is the cost per click and the competitive the competitive data around the uh, the Google AdWords. Okay. Which right. I don't, yeah, I don't really play in that space anymore. It's just become way too expensive. And I know that just from my knowledge that you can be just as effective without having to invest funds like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you, you know, if you put craft the right strategy. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Good to know. All right. So I, I love, I love new stuff. So keywords everywhere.com. Um, and suggestion for you, I, I think it's a good idea to know what, what the number of pe people who are viewing using these words, because it will help you craft your messages in your social media. Exactly. Platforms. Really important. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. right. So you want to make sure that you've got those words in your site, that you've got those words in your content. If you're creating videos that you can use the, you know, the videos and all of that and, and really helping to understand um, right, not coming from that place of assumption. Mm -hmm. uh, which is always a good thing. I love that. All right. So, in, yeah. and you know, and then as we go in here for the the, the Google search, um, I used to say I told Karen off off the air that I used to say eighty percent of the people never go uh, beyond the the first page, and she said, "Oh no, it's much higher." <laughs> so. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 
But and then and as, as I was explaining, being on page two isn't necessarily bad because that means mm-hmm. that you're just closer to getting onto page one. So you know, don't get disappointed if you're only on page two. That means that you're moving in the right direction. Just continue to provide consistent, relevant content, and eventually, you know, those spiders and the algorithm will start to acknowledge you. It just doesn't happen overnight. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and also, I think we need to say this to everyone, be patient. Patience really yeah. is important. Um, that yeah. none, of the, none of the growth, none of the instant, I mean, people, Karen, you know that there are people out here who push, take number one on Google in 12 hours and that kind of thing. Really? Uh, yeah. And, and we'll do it for a hundred bucks or whatever it is. But just yeah. be really smart. This is this is uh, publishing, and and book marketing and fl- influence positioning is a marathon. Don't think of yeah. it as a sprint because you're gonna you're gonna stumble. You'll stumble big. That's long term. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about your uh, your social media along with your branding. I think that's always important. That that yeah you know, how you bring that all together. So as a social media pro, what was, what are some of the key elements that you, you'd suggest? Um, well, you know, um, when I work with authors, um, a lot of times they'll come to me and they will want me to, to as a part of the, the 30 day uh, social media Facebook program that I have, they will, uh, have, they'll have me do that for the book. And really what I t- generally recommend is, yes, we will absolutely be putting the book at, out there in the social media channels as a part of that 30-day program. But it's it's really important for them to look at themselves as the brand because mm-hmm. they are it, – it's, it's a product that they have created. So, you know, it's, they are the ones that they want to be looked at as the subject matter experts or the trusted advisors. The, the book is really a product that they've created as a result of owning that particular uh, position or title, right? And so it's really important for the authors to look at themselves as, as, as a brand, and branding themselves as that. Fun. I missed my cue. So let's take a quick break and we'll come back to okay. talking about branding and power with it. Okay. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need. Need to maximize your book's potential, color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 1106 Design. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. 
They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask coming up you'll hear more about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith Ryle. all right social media it's i i think that uh, I, I know it's a, you feel like you need major doses of ibuprofen when it comes to that. I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's an overwhelm for so, so many. And one of the challenges that I found with, with clients that I work very closely with, um, when I say this is, we need to do, set up all the social media, you know, from the get go. Either you hire someone to get this set up or you are going to jump on it and get it going. Um, from the beginning because it should be part of your pre-book publishing effort if you're still in a pre-book area. It's part of that. Um, otherwise, that you're going to be playing catch-up. And this is the time that social media will help you start building the buzz and the recognition and beginning the momentum that you'd like to have when you're ready to formally publish your book that you're already known out there versus now you got to start it from scratch. Um, and that's a challenge. Karen, you want to add to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. It's a really good point. You know, I, um, I created the, the 30 day social media facelift program, um, really because I recognize that <clears throat> I was having authors that were coming to me after their book was out and they were kind of in a bit of a panic because they weren't getting as much of the sales or the exposure that they were hoping and anticipating that they were getting and that they put some social media pages together, but it just wasn't really working. And so then, and having conversations with, um, you know, people in the publishing business as well, industry, and really realizing that, there's really a need for the social media marketing aspect of the marketing of the book to be infused in the pre-launch phase of uh, any marketing that uh, an author or a publisher is looking at doing. And so now this 30-day program actually is being introduced three, four, five months prior to the launch of the book. And it's so it's ideal so that um, the authors don't have to worry about it. The publishers can say, hey, here's a source that you can go to. It's 30 days. She does all of the uh, social media optimization for you. She'll create the page or optimize it, get a consistent brand, promote your book. And then also within those 30 days, I'm actually working with the authors and teaching them how to then use the social media pages in a very strategic, effective way so that once that 30-day program is done, you know, I'm sort of teaching them to fish as well. So it's a lot less overwhelming. They feel much more empowered. 
it's also a great way to have those platforms set up so you can do pre-book launch, uh, list building, um, or, you know, pre-sales, uh, all of that. So it, it, it really has um, eliminated a, uh, a big need for the, just getting the social media aspect of it set up beforehand. After the fact is you're, you're kind of having to just be a lot more reactive in the sense if you're doing it after the book as opposed to being much more proactive um, and just having the program done for you beforehand. Mm-hmm. And that's where, that, this is, if you want to figure out how to sepa- your, separate yourself, to rise above the cloud of noise, this is the way to do mm-hmm. it. And, mm-hmm. and, and you have to keep going all time um, that you have. So uh, if we can, uh, and I, we, we, we have this segment and one more segment to go, um, I'd love to get into some strategies a little bit here, uh, dealing with maybe sure. some of the uh, uh, both the channels, including how in optimizing, monetizing YouTube um, yep. in there. So, <clears throat> if, if you'd like to pull uh, open up your bag of tricks here, Karen, and, and <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, is, is it was Karen? Karen, do you use your middle name all the time? Is it Karen Liz Albert, or do you just go by Karen Albert? Either one is fine. I, I I use the Karen Liz just because it sort of differentiates me, and again from search engine, right? If you put in Karen Liz Albert, I kind of own that space. <laughs> yeah, it's good. To, it's good to own the space. All right, so yes, Karen, <laughs> Karen Liz is with us today. <laughs> Karen Liz, <laughs> who's a, who's a social media strategist, expert, author herself, and a speaker, and she is the brains behind behind your curtain dot com. All right, so with this, Karen, that um, let's just kind of go through, maybe we go through, maybe is it the big five? So we go through um, Facebook, we go through Twitter, we go through LinkedIn, we go through Instagram, uh, Pinterest, oh, big six, and YouTube, um, and just kind of think. So what would some of the st- strategies for each one of those? Can you reel off a few? Sure. Um, so... All right, so let's start with Facebook, okay? So <clears throat> the strategy with Facebook is the, the, the way that you're going to be the most effective and powerful in the usage of that. So this is assuming that we have created all of the pages and, uh, you know, it's, it's um, real um, high-quality branding and graphics and videos and all that kind of stuff and, and all sort of that, like, low-hanging fruit stuff has been fully optimized on your pages. So now you're ready to what I call pull, pull back the curtain, right? So that the most effective way is that if you are already on Facebook, you have a community um, and you as an author absolutely need to get over any issues that you might have about introducing your personal Facebook community into your business um, Facebook community because it always is going to start with the closest circle that you have that are going to be your biggest fans, your biggest supporters, um, and you have to think of it as sort of a ripple effect. And so, you you know, you can you, you drop the pebble into the bond of the, the closest friends and family, and then you want to make sure that you ask for them to support you and share the page and ask for them to uh, use their circle of friends and family as well. Um, and I know I've worked with some authors, and they're just like, well, I feel bad asking, and you just have to get over that because – you have a product and you have a service and um, your your friends and family will want to support you. And that is sort of like the first strategy that you want to take is to really communicate with that that um, community that you have already created. But okay, don't so do that until you've got it ready, right? So, Karen, I have a question on that because are, mm-hmm. are you doing a personal side email ask? Are you doing a post up on your Facebook page? Are you buying an ad on Facebook and pushing it? What are you doing to get the ask out? No. Yeah, good question. So the ask, there's actually um, three very effective ways that LinkedIn, ha- LinkedIn that Facebook has created yeah. Yeah. for you to be able to um, get into your personal community. So on your, your Facebook business page, right underneath the banner header image, there is a button that is, um, that's a share. So when you click that share, that's going to create a post automatically 
pulling in the header image and your profile picture of your business page. And it will allow you to just then type a message and you can hit share and that go right onto your personal Facebook timeline. So okay. that means that all of your friends on Facebook will see that post and they can they can like the page right there from that particular post. All right. So then the second thing is, I mean, if you did that, let's say you have a, a group. I have I have like a you have to ask to join my when, my group. Um, is yep. there a share button on that page? Yeah. So you can share to your timeline. You can share to a private group. You can share to another professional business page. So mm-hmm. any of those aspects, yep, those are available for you to share. And then you just put in a, 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 a you just type in a comment there that just says, uh, you know, <clears throat> friends and family, Facebook, whatever, you know, I'd love your support. Please like my page. Please share with your community as well. Thank you for your support. Then the other way is that um, right underneath the header image, just to the right of the share button is a box with three dots. And if you click on that, you get a drop down menu that gives you the option to invite friends. And then that gives you a uh, pop-up menu that will actually show you the list of every single friend that you have on Facebook. And this is the only area that Facebook will actually allow you to click select all. So if you've got 500 or 5,000 friends, you can hit select all. And what that does is that gives those Facebook friends a notification right in their notification drop down. And they can actually click like directly from the notification drop down menu as well. So Facebook has really made it very user friendly okay. for other Facebook users to like and support your page. That's really important because as you, as I mean, we've all experienced when Facebook started changing their rules that all of a sudden maybe 19 of your friends saw a post. Yeah. And so yeah. what you're saying is this opens up the window. I love the idea. Exactly. Select yep. all, all, right, and then yeah, they can select go, all. all, right, and then so you can ask them to share and then come in and join a group, correct? Right. So uh, the liking from the notification, the select all, mm-hmm. that just goes to friends. The only way you can go to a group is if you do the share button. All right. So that's that's but sounds- the uh, invite friends is friends. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. And so then the third our- way that you can do that. All right. I'm going to. Okay. Let's hold on that. We're going to take our final break. So we'll do okay. the third way, and then we'll transition to all the rest of them um, very, very quickly. I know. There's a lot there. <laughs> okay. A lot. All right. We'll be right back. It's all through you, your guide to publishing. We're talking about how to Yeah. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these the book shepherding concept is simple the publishing world is changing and so must you You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. One of the 
most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, we were going to the laundry list of how to work with the, I call them the big six now. <laughs> you should sell publishing companies. They're, bad, they're down to the big five. Social media is expanding, growing. So that's Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Um, did I miss anything, Karen? You got that, that's it. You got it. No, oh, I love it when I get it all. All right. So you were <laughs> going to point number three on Facebook, I think. Yeah, so the third way that you can that you can share your page is from that same three box, uh, the box with the three dots drop down. When you select that invite friends, you also have the option to send invitations through Messenger. Uh, and so that's a, just another powerful way of um, getting the request or the invitation to like your new business page in front of all of your Facebook friends. So you kind of, you know, the three different ways to touch them. <laughs> so. If they haven't liked it by then, <laughs> then, you know, <clears throat> Get um, you're, you, yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, and so, and, and then, uh, you know, there's, there's also ways that you want to, just from all of these, another really great way to think about using these tools is to not always just try and push your message out in front of the buyer community, but also try and think about ways that you can connect with other um, complementary type of um, connections. If they are already potentially have a product or a service that's in front of a market that you want to get in front of, mm-hmm. to not always try and push your product in front of the consumer, but think about trying to create those professional relationships as well. So, in other words, you know, think about who's your market, who already has connection to that market, and find them on the social media pages. So, like their business page on Facebook, follow them on Twitter. If they've got an Instagram page, follow them, connect with that person on LinkedIn, and really just start to then look at their community. Because if it's already gone through the effort of building a community, then, you know, why reinvent the wheel? Look at what they're doing, what's working. And then you start to create, in every social media tool, you have a way of creating these sort of lists, if you will, to where you can start compartmentalizing those particular types of other, um, you know, I like, I don't like the word competitors. I think that they're influencers. I think that they, that you can collaborate with anybody that's out there. 
um, especially if you can communicate to them in such a way that what you're doing can complement their efforts and vice versa. Everybody's always open to that conversation around collaboration. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think totally. I yeah, I'm I I was uh, speaking to a group uh, just yesterday, saying I think we need to to kind of pull back from saying competitors. Um, and yeah. That who are your who are your comparable who are the, who are your comparable right. experts out there who who, else, right. who who's in your peer level um, that right. that that are influencers exactly. all those yeah I agree I totally yeah. agree. all right let's kiss on Twitter real quickly um, that certainly okay. has been in the news too lately well it's always been. <laughs> yes yeah. yeah. Right. So the big difference between something like Facebook and Twitter, where Facebook is really much more around quality versus quantity, it's almost the complete opposite with Twitter. Mm -hmm. Twitter is more around quantity, not so much quality. It's very fast. There's a lot of noise, a lot of activity. And so um, you want to – you've got to play in that, that same level uh, you have to have a lot of tweets going out uh, quite a bit. There's a tool that I love that's called Social Jukebox, and it's just like Music Jukebox where it's filled up with music, but instead of filled up with music, it's actually filled with, with preloaded tweets. And so you can go on there and connect it to your Twitter account and search for all these different sort of Twitter jukeboxes. They've got pre-canned and loaded, and, and you just turn it on. And it may not be directly related to your your product or service, but at least it's getting tweets out there that are relevant and speak to your market. And then you can create your own jukebox as well. So you can fill up with your own tweets and stuff. But another great thing with using Twitter is, so for example, for for authors, if you have a particular product that your book is about or or, um, find other journalists, blog articles, blog, bloggers are all over Twitter, and they are always looking for subject matter experts. And so, you know, do hashtag search, search for uh, particular keywords on Twitter, find those Twitter users that are speaking or writing about or interested in the same topic as your book or your story, because again, their followers are probably ones that would be interested in what you're writing about, and create Twitter lists and, and then start um, you know, following them, responding, liking, retweeting what they're doing because that gets you more top of mind as well in front of them. And it becomes reciprocal, right? So if you start liking and retweeting, then they're going to start doing the same for mm-hmm. you. So mm-hmm. that's kind of, that's the, that's kind of the, the quickest way that you can, um, you know, strategically utilize a tool like that that has so much going on. And then, um, Instagram is all about the hashtags, so do research about what the trending hashtags are and use those hashtags in all of your posts as well. And it's all pictures, so use high, good quality pictures. Um, use the Have links to your website on the pictures as well. You always want to have a call to action because you can't really have live links on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to LinkedIn, LinkedIn is all about the business to business. It's not about the business to consumer. So this is really where you want to get strategic about who are those partners, those power partners that you can connect with that will uh, support putting your product or your book in front of a community that they already have a connection with or could be a good referral for you to someone else. So that's the most powerful way of using LinkedIn is finding those other power partners that would be willing to connect you. Uh, Um, Yeah. And, and what about um, our group still is strong on LinkedIn? No. In fact, um, LinkedIn's probably going to move away from uh, groups. What they've done is they've created something new that's called communities and that's all around hashtags. And so you can now follow hashtags, which I love because it allows you to then, again, filter and create sort of consolidated uh, lists, if you will. Um, so for me, if if I'm wanting to follow authors, right, mm-hmm. then I'm going to start following a hashtag that's going to ha- be authors. So when I click on that hashtag in LinkedIn, it then changes my news feed to only those posts that are related that, that those particular um, LinkedIn users have used with that hashtag. So it kind of helps me then see, oh, who are the authors that are on LinkedIn that I might actually want to connect with. 
Well, but they may also not be your uh, your buyers of your book. That's another issue. Uh, right. No, and I was talking about for me. I was saying for, for mm-hmm. authors, you would want to be um, doing the hashtags of or publishers for me. Um, you want to look for the hashtags of those that are in that industry that you want to connect with. Wow. Does that make awesome. sense? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have to have an outside conversation because I have a group with 17,000 people in it. So if they're uh-huh. going to way, I'm going, oh my God, we've spent all this time building them up and interacting and working with these people. Yeah. It, LinkedIn's not pushing it as much as they used to. And the problem was, is that it just because it came a little bit too, too, um, noisy. People were starting to promote their business a bit much. And it was really difficult to start to, yeah. to well, like manage and control yeah. that. Okay, so we have less than a minute. One last thing you might want to add. One last thing I might want to add. Um, I I, I think it's just important to look at every single one of these as a tool. It's just a marketing tool. And so like any marketing, you want to have a strategy beforehand. So Mm -hmm. take a step back, look at or get a really good understanding of who's your target market, what are the keywords that market is using to find your particular product, service, or book? What's the problem that you are solving as a result of this book, if that's really um, important as well in the message? Get clear on that. Do the keyword research. Craft your content. And then look at which social media channel you want to use and pull the biggest lever to get in front of your market. Um, and then it's just, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot. Mm-hmm. 30 minutes a day, honestly, if you understand, if you've got the strategy on each of these yeah. tools, 30 minutes a day. And you know, you'll and see a big difference. You mentioned um, uh, Twitter's jukebox, which I haven't heard about, so I'm going to play around and figure out mm-hmm. that one. But mm-hmm. uh, is this kind of like a Hootsuite or that kind of thing? It's a totally different animal. A totally different animal. A totally different animal. All right. And and yep. so is there a number? I, and I, this is a question I meant to ask. That I actually put out several tweets a day, but is there a, a number, a max that people should go into? And when I hear someone say, Oh, yeah, I tweet twice a week, and I said, So you don't tweet at all. <laughs> That's what I yeah, no. yeah, no. I have tweets going out at least once every hour. So at least once an hour. So it's always mm-hmm. something going on in the stream. All right, with that, always something. we're going to close off. We're actually going to do a webinar with Karen. Um, Albert, in November, November 14th, you can mark your calendar. You'll be able to find that information on my website, thebookshepherd.com. Just click on the events tab. And with that, Karen, thank you so much for being with us today and hopefully unscrambling some of the maze of social media. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. It's been my pleasure, too. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. All right. To everyone, again, Karen's website is behind your thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles each week